So a couple of days back, I finally watched Space Jam: A New Legacy. It sucked, which is surprising because it could have been good. It could have been decent. The first movie is not a masterpiece, but I very much enjoyed it because I just like the aspect of a live-action character being in the cartoon world, especially with the iconic characters. Space Jam Two is Ready Player One, and it's pretty much a big-ass advertisement. The fan service, jeez, okay. As much as I would love to see Looney Tunes characters and DC characters interacting with one another and such, this movie just does not work very well that much. In fact, this movie has the Freddy Player One fan service stuff, which admittedly, I do not know if it could have worked or if it should have been just cut out of the movie entirely. Space Jam 2 is not a very good movie. With that said, Shifferilla Productions, the title for the video is Terrible But Very Fun. Terrible, yes, but very fun? Uh, well, um, I don't know. Let's see what Shifferilla has to say. Chevy Willa Productions is a pretty good YouTube reviewer and whatnot that I discovered a couple months back. I especially love the Shrek 2 and the Shark Tale review. So let's see what he has to say about Space Jam 2. I would. I don't usually watch his videos where he just reviews a movie that came out in theaters and whatnot. But we have stuff like HBO Max, and I'm not sure if all the theaters are open, and even if they are, they are used or something. Hope the movie theater guys got the jobs back. Get the jobs back. With that said, let's see what he has to say. Funding for Shaperillis is provided by Squarespace, the sponsor how many of times today's did he from How many times did he advertise Squarespace? Tools and analytics. Squarespace it's is no the blue apron, platform but to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Hey everyone, I watched Space Jam the second. I only did it because of our Lord and Savior Don Cheadle. Seriously though, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you might not know this, but the Don Cheadle lore runs deep in Schaeferless Productions. It's extremely extensive. Oh. Anyway though, I've never seen the first Space Jam, so I didn't have anything to compare this to, oh. nor did I have any expectations going in. Oh, okay. Well, that's not true. I expected it to be really, really bad. And it was. <laughs> but I also kind of loved it. Like, I'd argue this movie is less like Ralph Breaks the Internet and more like Shark Tale. Shark Tale where uh -huh. it knows it's a stupid piece of shit terrible movie and manages to have fun with that knowledge. I mean, there's a scene early on in the movie where the clueless Warner Brothers executives are pitching to LeBron James the idea of him getting randomly inserted into a bunch of Warner Bros. properties with no rhyme or reason, and he says to their face, that is the worst f***ing idea I've ever heard, I'm not doing that. Wow. And then the rest of the movie is basically him doing that. I don't know, I can really appreciate a movie that's this dumb and it knows it. With that said, I didn't excuse all the blatant IP farming and Ralph Breaks the Internet, and it's not like I can excuse it here. It's honestly even worse, but to the point where it wraps back around and becomes ironically hilarious. Like, they genuinely thought this montage where they just artlessly shove Looney Tunes characters into their classic films is entertainment. I was certainly entertained by how much secondhand embarrassment I was feeling from these scenes. Why are Rick and Morty here? Why do yeah, they wh of all properties why? Warner Bros. owns get a vocal cameo? It doesn't even make sense. Like, Rick says they were running tests on the Tasmanian Devil. Did LeBron and Bugs Bunny ask them to do that? Or when the Looney Tunes all left Toontown or wherever, did the Tasmanian Devil just go to Rick and Morty World on his own? Well then how did Rick know to deliver the Tasmanian Devil back to Bugs Bunny's spaceship? I guess he knew because he's the smartest guy in the universe or whatever, okay. Sure. Whatever. In case you couldn't tell, there is no logic to anything happening in this movie. For LeBron, the stakes are extremely high and you'd think he'd try a lot harder to recruit more powerful characters than the Looney Tunes gang, but he gives up on trying that because this is Space Jam 2 and the Looney Tunes must be the team in Space Jam 2 <laughs> because Space Jam 2 is the movie you paid Warner Brothers in order to consume. Yep. So consume it. 
Hey, remember how in a real movie like the 2011 Muppets film, they had to get all the Muppets back together and they really took their time doing so? Going to each individual location and really emotionally connecting with each character? Yes. Getting them to put their fears and insecurities aside and join the team yes. yet again? Space Jam 2 does the same thing, but with zero emotion. Oh. They literally go to each world, find Looney Tune characters in a classic movie, and then they just cut to the next world, sometimes without even talking to those characters. Why are these characters joining this basketball team when most of them seem to be enjoying their new lives and all these Warner Bros properties that the movie subliminally wants you to watch? It doesn't matter. This is Space Jam 2. Shut up and consume. Yeah. The fact that these are Looney Tunes characters doesn't even matter in the slightest. They honestly add nothing other than occasional references to their original cartoons. You could replace the Looney Tunes with Scrimbo Bimblo, the lovable Scrunko, and it would make no difference. This is Space Jam 2. The sad thing is, there's a nugget of an interesting story here with LeBron and his son. Since LeBron has been forced to focus on success his entire life, to the point where he's having trouble relating to his son at all outside of pushing him to play basketball that's hey, kind of cliche that though like a neat character arc oh wait we're not doing that because we gotta do some wacky warner bros hijinks instead also this kid is extremely dumb i get that he has problems with his dad but he literally lets don Cheadle manipulate him to an insane degree like don yeah Cheadle he's kind of dumb a bunch of innocent people into he's kind of dumb because don algae rhythm it's bad enough that he's the typical uh, manipulate a uh, child to do some meat to do things with you kind of crap. But the way he delivers it is more threatening. And yeah, the kid's kind of dumb because he couldn't tell from threats this game and he's gonna trap them here forever for some unexplained reason yeah. and lebron tells his son this before the game but i guess the son doesn't believe him or doesn't care and just plays for don Cheadle and his horrible cgi snake lady team i also like how the looney tunes are horrified when don Cheadle turns them into cg abominations again it genuinely feels like the movie is aware of how terrible it is the funniest parts of the movie are when lebron screams or attempts to act concerned because of how hilariously unconvincing it is i shouldn't be mean i know he's not an actor but at the i'll give lebron this uh as much as michael jordan not even trying doesn't really bother uh, michael jordan uh never d doesn't try to act in many areas if at all but at the same time uh it's not really bothering me that much uh, if anything it's more amusing and i'll give lebron james this he does try same time he's rich he'll live through this criticism the only aspect of this movie yeah, that's, that's unironically good outside of some of the neat animation styles like the wonder woman world is don Cheadle's performance like i genuinely can't remember the last time i had this much fun with a villain in any movie he is hamming it up like no other and it's fantastic He's even occasionally funny, which most of the movie is not. I thought that Michael B. Jordan joke was cute, but they dragged it out for too long, and sometimes there were funny Looney Tunes hijinks. But for the most part, most of this movie's laughs came from how pathetic it was. This is such an embarrassment of a film that you can't help but laugh. But there's no way this couldn't have been intentionally embarrassing. I honestly can't bring myself to hate it, because I had a blast watching it. I was on the edge of my seat, waiting to see what stupid shit it was gonna do next. I'm sure you're wondering whether or not I think this is better or worse than Ralph Breaks the Internet. Oh, it's worse, no doubt. Oh. But I like it a lot more. Ralph Breaks the Internet has more good things in it, and it's overall yep. more competent. But it's an extremely self-serious and obnoxious butchering of characters I previously liked. On top of its plot revolving almost entirely around brands. Space Jam 2, meanwhile, is so hilariously incompetent on nearly every level, and its use of branded content is somehow even more pathetic. <laughs> and it has Don Cheadle. So yeah, I had the time of my life. 3 out of 10, go watch it. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go make a website that- I kinda like Shark Tale. <laughs> I just do, I just- I can see the problems, but I just like that movie. Space Jam 2, I just do not like that movie and it's just embarrassing. For him saying that this is like Shark Tale where it's pretty much a bad incompetent movie but he loves it. Uh, I can't seem to love it here. But he points out that the, the whole Muppets reuniting stuff in the Muppets 2011 movie. Yep, that's pretty good. And Ralph Breaks the Internet. Uh, 
it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's competent. And I kind of want to see more of the Disney princesses interacting with each other. Seriously, though, if they make a Ralph Breaks the Internet spinoff with the Disney princesses, I think it would be pretty good. And I <laughs> wouldn't mind them to go all out. Especially considering how I made an ideas video a couple years back. But I have no further interest in that whatsoever. I, I just, I mean, I do hope that Disney can take my ideas. It's on me, but... Nowadays, I'm barely holding my breath. But anyways, Rob Breaks the Internet is somewhat competent in many areas, even though it's just an average movie and such. And I would rather watch that over this. And the DC brands, the other Warner Brothers brands, they kind of recruited Superman and stuff, but... They just didn't because, well, Daffy Duck has to make things awkward, unfortunately. Thanks, Daffy Duck. They had a brief Batgirl cameo in there, which I did not pay attention to my first view. And, and uh, I guess I should be glad she's back, but at the same time, uh, no. The sad thing is, there's a few ideas and concepts that could have been a good idea, especially like maybe have a cartoon character having fun, uh, LeBron James being serious and whatnot. I wish there were more moments like that and they could have gone deeper with it. But it has no emotional beats. We have wacky situations, wacky situations, advertisement. I'm just shocked and sad for Space Jam and New Legacy, unfortunately, because Space Jam 1, I very much enjoyed. A New Legacy just jumps the sharks and screws things up and just insults your intelligence. The aliens being back, I wondered where they are, but they have no point in the plot whatsoever. They're just there. Space Jam A New Legacy is just not a Space Jam movie. It's not whatsoever. And I heard that there might be a third movie. They're thinking about making a third movie. And get a load of this. It'll have Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> and it's not going to be a sports basketball video game thing. It's not going to be a basketball thing. No, no, no. It's going to be professional wrestling. <sighs> And the Looney Tunes are trapped in the real world, actually. Even though they don't go anywhere with it. It's just the end of the movie. Also, I checked out Angry Joe's review of it. It's a 2 out of 10. Shifarilla does a 3 out of 10. Which is... A bold claim, Shifarilla. You have made a very, very bold claim. But then again, we both like Shark Tale for a different reason, so I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, if you guys like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel, please. And I hope you have a good day or night, and take care.